this episode of Bondi Vet. He really shouldn't be scratching that much. Mm. Chris has to work out what's making Monty the goat so distressed. If my hunch is right, Matt's going to freak out when he sees exactly what's on Monty's skin. Lisa is confronted with a young dog in serious trouble. This poor dog is absolutely terrified. Something's going on to make a six-month-old puppy behave like this. That jaw slap sends shivers down your spine. A baptism of fire for a rookie trainer. It's the scariest feeling in the whole world. It's going to be very interesting. And Chris meets his match with a feisty 42-year-old Galar. You ever feel like it backs up against the wall, Chris? <laughs> Never. You make my world a better place. <laughs> Yes! Did we get you walking again soon? That's good. How you doing? Absolutely. This is Monty. Oh, Monty, hello. I really know how to hold a goat. Matt has brought miniature goat Monty into the Bondi clinic for a routine consultation with Chris. So, do you need to steal him? <laughs> I brought Monty in today because when I bought him, he had a registration tag through his ear. So, I thought it was time to come in and get him chipped. So, he's all registered. Is that your dad? <laughs> <laughs> But Monty is finding it hard to make it past reception. What is going on here? Of course. Is this yours? Yeah. How are you going? I'm Chris. G'day, Chris. Matt. Hey, Matt. You're, You're a very on. brave man you to bring. Yeah. It's, it's a present. It's not yours. No, it Watch is. Watch this one here. <laughs> You straight up to take him over, though. He's not coming home, I'm already telling you now. Come on. Step away from the goat, let's go. I can't pass him up. Come on. You know, in here, some of us have to keep their cool and maintain a focus because we're working. But all the same, it's hard to deny that Monty is a cute kid. Uh, okay, look, you've got to say goodbye at some stage. Okay, I'll show you how you put him down, Jackson. Thank you. So, aside from driving the nurses crazy, what's the reason he's here today? So I've brought him in basically so I can get him chipped and just the last couple of days I've just noticed him scratching away at himself a little more. Okay. Um, so I thought, look, while we're here, mm. get that checked out as well. Matt was always due to bring in Monty for a microchipping, but in the last few days he's really noticed that he started scratching. And even here right now, he just goes a few seconds before he can't help but lift that hoof through and scratch away. That's not entirely normal. Feral Hospital Sash, emergency vet Dr. Lisa Chimes has been given a difficult case. What's wrong, Gypsy? Six month old Gypsy has been brought in after struggling to keep down any food for weeks. Why don't you go for a walk? Mm -hmm. This poor dog is absolutely terrified. Gypsy, Gypsy. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know how we're going to find out what this dog's problem is. Why don't you come, come on, Bab, out of the cage? Come on, sweetie pie. Good girl. Come on, Dad. I know, I know. What about some of this? I've been told that she's regurgitating, but without actually seeing her do it, I don't know how we're going to diagnose this problem. <sighs> You're only a puppy. You shouldn't be like this as a puppy, Bab. What's happened to you? She should be jumping all over me, wanting cuddles, being energetic and wanting food, and she's just cowering in the corner. So something's going on to make a six-month-old puppy behave like this. Hey, darling. Lisa has now called in specialist Justin Wimpole to do further tests. Poor girl's very nervous, aren't you? 
So, we'll try some liquid. See how we go. Bit touch and go, I think, still. So the test we're doing on Gypsy is actually like a live x-ray. So when she actually swallows, you'll see the food going down. And what we're hoping to find is the area where that food is getting stuck. Come on. No, it's just not gonna happen. What about a bowl of the food? Come on, Gypsy. Take it out. Justin's had no luck. The fluoroscopy, this test we're trying to do is an absolute failure. Hi, Gypsy. Hey, honey. We haven't got a diagnosis. We don't know what's going on with Gypsy. We have to move on to the next thing, which is a CT scan and endoscopy under anaesthetic. I'm just trying to help. She doesn't quite get it that we're trying to help. No. Hey. See, every 10 seconds or so, he's having a good scratch. Yeah. A lot of time it's around that, that neck area or across his, his shoulders here. At the Bondi Clinic, miniature goat Monty has been brought in to get a microchip. He really shouldn't be scratching that much. Mm. But Chris is now concerned about the kids' excessive scratching. As I part the fur on Monty's shoulders, I've got a funny feeling I know what's going on here. But rather than going for some sort of scientific test, I'm going to reach for some stationery. Let's try something with him. So. It is what it looks like, it's just sticky tape. This might look like some sort of kindergarten craft project, but using sticky tape is actually the coolest and most precise way of seeing exactly what's on Monty's skin. I've got my sample, but the fact is whatever is there is just gonna to be too small to see with my own eyes. We need some help with a microscope. Matt has had Monty for just 10 days, but they're already inseparable. He's fantastic. He's very affectionate. He comes with me to work and he's been getting the, the privileged life, I guess, for the last 10 days. He's been in, you know, lying on the bed and he just snuzzled up to you and, and then it's the chewing noise I woke up to most mornings. You said you share the same bed? Uh, yeah. Matt's chosen an interesting time to tell me about the sleeping habits of Monty and the fact that he shares the bed because if my hunch is right, He's going to freak out when he sees exactly what's on Monty's skin. The only reason I ask is because the thing that's making Monty itch is that. Dirty big louse. Wow, OK. So he's got a lot of them. Right. Now, they would have come with him. They're not something he obviously picks up yep. in his new home. Right. They're spread between goats. Yep and between sheep, yep. so. He's off the bed, <laughs> straight away. Not a chance Monty will be sharing the bed anymore. I think uh, the time's come where tough love this week. So he's gonna start learning the, the hard rules of being a goat. <laughs> so we'll give him his treatment. Funnily enough, because not too many baby goats get diagnosed with lice in city vet clinics, there isn't actually a treatment specifically for this problem, but thankfully, a dog and cat flea treatment has a drug in it that works perfectly and quickly. Um, so we're taking care of the lice? Yeah. Okay, so we'll give me his microchip and we're done. Great. It's okay, mate. It's right, mate. He's just taking some time to process all of this. <laughs> oh, don't show me that face. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> and right now I can tell that Monty isn't a big fan of mine. I'll see you soon, Mon. Things will improve, Hi. I promise. Right. Thanks right. a lot, Chris. On the way Cheers, out. Mate. Run. All right. <laughs> Quickly. Don't turn back. At Sash, Lisa's trying one last time to persuade the terrified Gypsy to eat. Come on, Gypsy. The six-month-old shepherd finds it impossible to keep down food. Gypsy, it's okay, honey. It's all right. It's okay. <sighs> Owners Roy and Hazel have now been called in to help. 
It's okay, honey. The young pup was Roy's surprise oh. 70th birthday present after their previous shepherd passed away. She's very, very loyal and uh, when we found out about this, I thought, that, uh, we're not going to have her long. Yeah. Yes, I think that's the worry, that they'll find something really horrible and untreatable or something like that. I think that's the, the big worry. See what she does. And Jim, she wants to see something here in the back. No, no. <laughs> sit, down, sit down. Come here. Come here. If the young pup doesn't eat, the next step will be invasive tests. Wait. 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 Oh my goodness. I can't believe she's eating. Oh, we tried very hard to get her to eat. But within minutes, Gypsy is becoming visibly distressed. Oh, she's really looking agitated now. Oh, she's feeling sick. Just regurgitated. Poor thing. Now that I've seen Gypsy regurgitate and I've seen her eat and how distressed she gets after eating, it really makes me think that this poor dog is so anxious and so nervous and so afraid of people because she's lived with this condition her whole life. It's all right, it's OK. Gypsy will now definitely need a CT scan. But the agitated pup is being sent home to calm down and will be brought back in tomorrow. We're a bit like people with kids having tests, you know, a bit anxious about what they'll find out and so forth, so I'll be glad when it's over. You know, I don't normally take time out of the clinic to go and visit art galleries, but today there's a pretty good reason. My saviour of the day, Chris. <laughs> How are you? Oh, man, good to see you. Don't Very good to see you. on too early, all right? No, 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 but hey, man, anything that's going to help my bird is fantastic for me, so... Uh. Chris is responding to a call for help from local gallery owner, Maurizio. <coughs> this is Dr Chris. Hey, Pretty. Say hello. <coughs> His best friend, Pretty the Galar, has suddenly developed an unusual growth. Now, you're worried about this lump, is that the story? On the right leg there, yeah. It's confusing the hell out of me. OK, but it has come up fairly quickly. It's only in the last three months. How old is he now? He was 42 around uh, September last year, so he's going on 43. 43. Wow. 43, yeah. I've had him since I was 11 years old. Jeez. Old story. He's a big old part of your story. life, then. A huge part of my life. He's been with me the whole time. Every uh, every day, I, I literally talk to him over the phone if I'm away. Someone will hold a, a phone to him and... Yeah, he's, um, he's a big part of the family. There are a couple of things that worry me. He is getting on. Yeah. And look, in the same way as in people, the older they get, mm. the more likely you are to have, I guess, more serious health problems. Exactly, issues. So, look, I think probably that the best thing is to get in there with him. Mm -hmm. Need to get a good look at that lump, yeah, but also, importantly, get a feel of that lump too. Exactly, yeah. A lump that appears pretty suddenly is cause for enough concern as it is. But when you add on top of that the fact that Pretty is 42 years old, which is really middle to late age for Galahs, yeah, we've got reason to be concerned. Hey Tim. Hey mate, what have we got? So we've got a bit of um, roux for us. Roux. Um, and we've got a bit of chalk. Beautiful. Bits of everything. At the Australian Reptile Park, a master class in survival is about to begin for a rookie keeper. Uh, maybe leave one for one of the long poles, a chook. General Manager Tim Faulkner is teaching new boy Kyle to train one of their deadly predators. These are tools of the trade. This is everything you need before you have a training session with a crocodile. Elvis was a problem crocodile in Darwin Harbour. Five metre croc attacking fishing boats. So he ended up here. They'll be good, mate. Yeah, no, they'll crunch up. They sound awesome. Elvis thinks with his belly. So we want him to attack. We want him to kill. We want him to think that he is master of this area. And we do that by moving him around and giving him a piece of food when he does the right thing. If 
anyone says they're not scared of him, they're in the wrong place, man. He scares anyone out here. There he is, mate. He's looking at you. He's ready. Hey, Elvis. We're coming, mate. There's a real chance in Elvis's yard that you can make a mistake and he can kill you. Oh, that's scary. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Jess. Hey, Good. And Jessie. Jessie. Right. Jessie. Nice. Jessie. Six-month-old Gypsy is back at Sash, and she's not impressed. It's OK, Gyps. She's not happy to be here. No. Gypsy is so anxious in this hospital. She's scared of vets. She's scared of anyone except her parents. All right, Gyps. <laughs> we'll look after yeah. you, sweetie pie. Yeah. OK. Lisa's hoping to find out today why the puppy can't keep down her food and is in constant pain. Gypsy, come. That's the way. OK. Bye-bye. I really feel for Roy and Hazel. They, they're so distressed and anxious. They've had Gypsy since she was a young puppy. The investigation starts with a CT scan. Very suspicious. But it's inconclusive. We've had a really good look at the CT, and as it gets lower down towards the heart, there's some definite narrowing. So obviously something is, is making that area a lot more narrow, and that's where the food is getting stuck. A camera is now being put down Gypsy's food pipe to look for any abnormalities. There we go. So you can see there's a severe narrowing here in her esophagus. That's really narrow. Yeah, so we can get through with our little scope, but you can imagine a whole lot of dog food just can't get through there, causing her a lot of distress and making her regurgitate. And imagine with all that saliva just sitting there, she's probably got constant heartburn. Gypsy has a condition called a persistent right aortic arch. Now, it sounds all fancy, but basically it means that Gypsy's got an extra vessel in her chest near her heart that is constricting her esophagus. Without immediate surgery to open up her food pipe, Gypsy is in grave danger. Good girl. One of the risks of regurgitation is an animal uh, not getting enough nutrition. And you can see that Gypsy is quite skinny, so she does get some nutrients through, but a lot of it comes back up. For worst case scenario, they could cause a terrible infection in her lungs, and then she's dealing with pneumonia as well. So it's something we really have to fix. Good girl. It's all right, babe. We'll get Dr. Chris to have a look at you. At Wallara, Chris needs to examine Pretty. The 42-year-old Galar has a massive lump growing on his leg, and the worry is that it could be cancerous. Seeing the lump that's formed in the amount, in the quick time that it has, uh, it concerns me a hell of a lot. It's OK. Get you. It's OK. There's no denying it. To truly assess what is going on with this lump, I need to get in there and have a good look for myself. Maybe. Given the fact that Pretty hasn't been handled for a number of years, it's not going to be easy. Oh! He's got the dominant position. Hasn't he? Has if anyone gets close enough to him, he very much defends himself. It's going to be very interesting. See, Pretty, what you don't realise is that I brought in my number one <laughs> bird controlling device. <laughs> Currently, everything is in Pretty's favour. He's got the height advantage, he knows all the hiding spots, and he's got a pretty sharp beak. <laughs> You ever feel like it backs up yeah. against the wall, Chris? <laughs> Never. <laughs> but what he doesn't realise is I've got the towel. Okay, let go. Okay. Let go. Good boy. Good boy. So we just keep you nice and relaxed there, buddy. <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. So With Pretty beginning to fret, Chris has to work fast. Even though I've successfully managed to catch Pretty, the fact is we cannot delay this examination. It has to be done quickly because stress for a 42-year-old bird could be fatal. That's OK, baby. Gypsy's going to have surgery. Um, the surgery would be open chest surgery. At SASH, it's time to explain to Gypsy's owners exactly what's wrong with their precious girl. They will have to open up her chest, have a look in there. Then she'll have to stay in hospital for quite a few days after that to recover. 
I think it's just that, you know, you get a dog in you, you know, especially someone like Gypsy, and then you find out she's got something like this. You know, it kind of hurts a bit. Oh, uh, he's managed on. Okay. <laughs> the surgery is big and it's risky and it's painful, it's chest surgery, but the benefit that she might go on and be able to eat like a normal dog certainly outweighs all of that. I need a hug. You need a hug? <laughs> You'll be fine. We will look Guys, after her, I promise you. It's been a long you. night. They are so nervous. There's some big things ahead and, and hopefully we can get her through this. So this is the lump here, and it is tucked away in a, in a tricky spot. Mm. Chris is examining a lump on 42-year-old Galar Pretty. He's hoping it's not cancerous. We're looking at about three centimetres by three centimetres. It's movable. Yep. See that? Yep. Looking at it, it is, it is a tumour. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. So probably the most important thing is, is to get a sample of that. The chances of me being able to catch pretty again are pretty small, so everything has to be done right now, including taking a sample of that lump. There we go. Good boy. It's all over. Huh? You okay? Hopefully in that sample there'll be enough to tell us exactly what type of cell is sitting in that it's lump. Sitting there. Sure. And from there we know what we're dealing with. After feeling this lump, I've got no doubt that it is a tumour, but what kind of tumour and what this tumour really means to Pretty and Maurizio is still a mystery. Have a look down here. Yeah. So just picking up this. Yeah. This is all his food scraps. Yes. It's so all everything that he's eaten. If you go through it all, mm -hmm. sunflower seed, yeah. sunflower seed. He is having breakfast, lunch, dinner, sunflower seeds. Yeah, m mostly, yeah. So this is important. And this may actually be relating back to what we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take that sample back mm -hmm. to the vet clinic. Sure. We're gonna analyze that. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you know as soon as I have some news. Thank you. Okay. Very much appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> not sure if he wants to see you soon, but. I'm not gonna make eye contact with him right now. Just, no, he's, we're he's... clearly not talking. I'm always optimistic, but um, he is a bird of a certain age. Uh, but I am worried about it, definitely, yes. Okay. He knows, that's good. Oh, he's a big animal up close. Tim is training Kyle to feed Elvis, the most lethal predator at the Australian Reptile Park. I've got an offsider today, Kyle, and he's learning all of the behavioural aspects of a croc. Where's it safe to stand? What's the croc doing? When's the croc about to attack? All the things that mean he can do this by himself one day. How dangerous is a five metre saltwater croc? Deadly, that's all there is to it, deadly. It's scary. Sometimes I have to go to the toilet before I go in here. When he comes up, he's gonna get set. Yep. Okay, and then we're gonna try and get him to ambush. Back a little bit, mate. Oh, that's scary. Look at him. Oh, his tail going. Oh. oh. Up he comes. Up. up, Elvis. Now we want him up, mate. We want him up high. Higher than that. Oh, listen to that. That jaw slap sends shivers down your spine. The strength in that. You just imagine that it's your leg or your hand. Oh, oh. Down the hatch. There's no words you can explain how scary that is. This is where we get him to jump. So in the wild, this would be for fruit bats. Natural behaviour would be knocking fruit bats and birds out of trees, and he's snatching it from a low branch. He's, he's looking at me. Elvis, watch the chicken, mate. The chicken. You keep your eye on the chicken, buddy. There's always that chance that he could launch in and grab you. He can be quite quick or even quite docile, but you can never take that chance. Up you come, up, up. Oh. Good boy, Elvis. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's it, good boy. Good boy, mate. Yeah, you wanna have a go? Yeah, I'll give it a go. Okay. It's now crunch time for Kyle, but will he pass his initiation? Work in the zoo industry, it has its dangers and has its fun as well, but this just puts it in a whole new level. It's the most scariest feeling in the whole world. Come, big boy. 
This is Kyle Elvis. That's what we've got. Really, when you're dealing with a 42 year old bird, I guess anything is possible when it comes to a lump. So, I'm nervous because we just don't really know what we're dealing with here. And there's a lot of emotion at play. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is about to test the cell sample taken from Pretty the Galar. The beloved pet recently developed a lump on his leg, and the concern is that it could be cancerous. It looks like a kid's science project, but what I'm doing is actually using different coloured stains to essentially illuminate different parts of this sample. By doing that, I get a clearer picture about what's happening. Okay, let's take a look. That's interesting. So wherever I go, I'm seeing two things. Red blood cells, which are obviously meant to be there, but these white looking cells, and they are everywhere. And even though they look like they're thousands of bubbles of nothing, they are something. And what they are is fat cells. And right now, that's all I need to know. Good girl. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. I'm staying here, all right, hon? Just getting caught. You're okay. At Sash, Gypsy is about to have her chest surgery. Hey, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. You're a good girl. Even though Gypsy's had some sedation, she's still really, really nervous. You can just see the look in this dog's eyes. She's just terrified. So I'm going to stay in the room until she's under anaesthetic, just so that she's got a familiar face. All right, puppy. Specialist surgeon Dr Andrew Marchewski will attempt to fix the rare condition she's been suffering from since birth. Gypsy's got persistent right aortic arch, which is a congenital abnormality that basically ends up with a narrowing of her esophagus. And as a result, when they try and swallow food, it just comes straight back up. If she keeps doing that for the rest of her life, eventually she's going to end up with pneumonia. And that can be catastrophic and they can die from that. Bleeding's always a potential problem in the thorax. There's lots of big blood vessels because you're right near the heart. You just gotta be really careful. That's the actual band of tissue there that we're gonna be cutting out. So we're just gonna cut one side like that. And then we'll grab the other side. I mean now you can see that band is gone. And now as soon as we've cut that, you can just see the esophagus expand. How's it going? Well, I mean, it's looking as good as we could hope. Well, we'll see how she goes. All right. <laughs> it's going to be a long recovery process. Gypsy's had big surgery. We're just going to have to wait and see how she goes day by day, one step at a time. Doing really well, sweetie. Mm -hmm. a good sleep. This is Kyle Elvis. From the middle, I think. We'll try and get him to jump. Bring him out. Let's go. Come on, Elvis. Come, big boy. Kyle is a keeper at the Australian Reptile Park. Tim is giving him his first crocodile feeding lesson. He'll be terrified. I know what it's like. Kyle's a good keeper, but it's nerve-wracking because you're not just thinking about, is the croc going to eat? It's about, where's Kyle standing? What's he going to do when the croc comes out? What's he going to do if the croc on this particular day is crankier than normal? Come on. A little bit higher. Don't let him snatch it. That's it. Yep, let him see it. Between oh, yeah. his eyes a little bit more, mate. That's it. Maybe. Higher, higher, higher. Oh. OK, get it back off him. Come on, buddy. Open. Wait for cheeky eyes. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's looking at you now, mate. You had a Mexican standoff, mate. Oh. Just be patient. <laughs> he just wants to hold on, didn't he? That's all right, he's got to swallow it. Elvis is pulling Kyle closer and closer. One quick yank and this rookie keeper will be in serious trouble. 
Can't be worse. Just hold it. He's got to come up. That's it. Let, 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 try and keep it loose. Try and keep loose on it. That's it. Yeah. Give it a couple of yanks, Kyle. Let him know you got it. Come on, buddy. He's a cheeky boy. Yes, what you took, buddy? Can't swallow it down the hatch. He's got gotcha. you. Cheeky as well. Well done, mate. That was good. That was a good jump. That's <laughs> what you want. Getting to sort of launch up. But he's still holding on to it. How was that? Yeah, yeah, first jump ever. That was. Whew, even though, He's close, isn't he? Yeah, oh, you don't realise that you're only like a metre away from him, and oh my god, that's scary. Out He's good. Yeah. Oh, you did I, well, mate. That was good. If anyone says they're not scared getting in this yard, that's not true. Whew, very terrifying. Elvis is happy. He's worked hard for his food and he's got a new toy to play with, Kyle. <laughs> he wants me. I tell you what. I think I got a toy. <laughs> I am going to go and get your mum and dad. What do you think? What do you think about that? You want to see mum and dad? Yes, I do. It's been 24 hours since Gypsy's chest surgery. Today, her owners, Hazel and Roy, will find out if the operation has worked. I was a bit emotional all day. Well, you know, like, pretty apprehensive, wondering how it's going to turn out. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Here's a little yeah. baby. You ready? Yes. Yeah. Come on. Okay. 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 I don't want her getting too excited, but I know she will. Gypsy, hello, darling. Hello. hello. Oh. Hang on, Gypsy, sweetie. I'll we'll open it in one sec. As soon as she sees them, she's just wanting to jump all over them. We're trying to keep her calm, but the poor little girl is so excited to see mum and dad. Come on, dad. Just stand here. Not too much excitement, huh? <laughs> Good girl. Not dry food just yet. It's a little bit more solid than liquid, so we'll we'll transition her very slowly. But this will be a really good test to see how she goes. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Will Gypsy finally be able to eat a meal without pain? Okay, good girl. Okay, good girl. Okay. Off he goes again. for him. She's your baby, isn't she? Oh, how good is that? <laughs> she can reach her potential now because uh, I think this was going to only get worse and uh, we could have lost her and that's unthinkable. Last time she would have already brought it up by now. Yeah, oh, absolutely. She would have been in great distress by now anyway. So how does that make you feel? Good. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. That is exciting. Yeah. And she's smiling. Yeah, she Big is. smile on her face. She's just like a different dog. I can't even describe the progress that we've had. This is one of the most exciting things I've seen. I saw how hard it was for this little girl to eat and now she can eat like a normal dog and that is just priceless. Pretty, look who's here. Hey, pretty. Il dottore. Hello. How are you? In Wallara, Maurizio is about to find out what the future holds for his best mate of 42 years, Pretty the Galar. So, I do have the result from that sample we took. It is a lipoma. Essentially, Pretty has a lump there that's made up of fat cells. Okay. Now, that can continue to grow, yeah. and it can get to the point where it starts to affect his life. <coughs> What's happening is that he's eating like a king. Mm. He's eating sunflower seeds day in, day out. They're all is, over the base of his cage there. That's right. right which right. are 30, 40 percent fat. Yeah. So for him, he's eating all the calories he can possibly squeeze into that little body of his, but he's doing nothing about burning them off. About burning them off. Mm. And what happens in a glass body when they get to this sort of stage is they actually start to produce these fatty lumps almost out of desperation as a way of sending the fat somewhere. So I could get in there now and operate, remove this lump. But he's 42 years old. Mm. What I think is going to be as effective is doing something else. So <clears throat> this is essentially the best medicine we can buy for pretty right now. Yeah. Take these. Jeez. Silver beet. And spinach. Wow. Wonder drug. Some kale. Kale. All right. So oh, good. that is going to be 
what keeps him happy during the day. I'm not happy with this. And now one thing I have to ask you too, let, let's fragrance sex, not fragrance sex, he loves his pasta. He loves pasta. Don't tell me this. <laughs> he really loves pasta. Maurizio is now telling me everything that he's ever fed pretty. It's like some sort of confessional. And it's shocking. So what it's else a, does he love? He likes steak too. He likes the fat off the steak as well. If I can give him sort of spinach and ricotta and lotti, he doesn't mind it, but he likes a good um, veal tortellini. Baby, tell him, do you like pasta? Yeah. Tell him, it's not my fault. Will you say something in my defense, please? Yeah. The tricky thing here is that Maurizio truly believes that he's been doing the right thing for Pretty by giving him what he sees as being a balanced diet. But there's no other way of looking at it. Pretty and Maurizio have ultimately been feeding this tumour. So he's going to eat himself skinny with this correct diet. He's not going to like me. Yeah. Stalk there. Pretty's path to enlightenment is pretty simple. A dessert spoon of millet twice a day, and then green veggies. Kale, silver beet, spinach, readily available. Do those and Pretty will be sitting pretty. It's just hard to imagine going from pasta, cannoli, steak, fish, chicken, nuts, fruit, to what? Three different types of grass, basically. And a little bit of millet seed. I, it's gonna be very interesting, very, very interesting. But the reality is simple. Unless Maurizio stops feeding pretty fatty food and puts him on a strict diet, the senior citizen won't survive. You have to promise me, no matter how much he complains, no matter how much he talks to you, no matter how much he probably mm, asks, and he will. possibly in Italian, for pasta, <laughs> exactly. you cannot give in. If you give in, you shorten uh, his life. Yeah, exactly. But look. <laughs> Whatever needs to be done, uh, needs to be done, as you said. You know, it, it'd be ridiculous to take his life to this extent and not let him live it out. Mm. Did you just go... It's a bit of a, you know, an Italian thing when you sort of go, uh, yeah, maybe, huh? What's going on? Oh, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> Definitely going to be difficult, but... Difficult versus health. And, and life, there's going to be no comparison between the two. So I have to do something about it, and we are. This Italian-Australian is now eating salad. Pretty's already diving headfirst into his new diet and his life plan. But I really feel like the big test here is Maurizio. If he can not give in to temptation, if he can stay strong, then we've got a real hope of shrinking this tumour. Ta-da! Ta-da! Ta-da, buddy! Ta-da! Thank you, Dr Chris. Hello. 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 Come on in. At Sash, it's been three days Hello. since Gypsy's risky surgery. I'm done. <laughs> Roy and Hazel had almost given up hope of their little girl having a normal life. <laughs> What an incredible reunion. Gypsy was jumping all over Hazel and then jumping on Roy and back to Hazel and Roy and she just didn't know where she wanted to be but she just knew she feels good and she feels happy and life is great. Well, I am. <laughs> Did we come to get you? We were always going to come and get you. You got your girl back. We huh? have. We got her back. And you, miss, do I get a goodbye hug, please? I got such a warm hug from Roy and Hazel and the first time they ever hugged me was to say, please look after our little girl, we hope she gets through the surgery. And now they've given me a big hug because everything's worked out and they're getting their little girl back home as a normal dog. It's just wonderful. Come on up. Thank you. You know, I don't think anyone enjoys being on a diet, but with Pretty, the hope was it would actually help him avoid a surgery. I'm just not sure he's going to appreciate that fact. You find out you haven't been eating the grains, you know what you're going to get, don't you? More biopsies. It's been four months since Chris last saw Pretty and Maurizio. Hey, Dr Chris. Yeah, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not checking up, but I am <laughs> checking up. Now Chris is back to see whether these two best mates have stuck to the prescribed diet and whether the tumour on Pretty's leg has shrunk. Pretty used to be on a diet of almost everything. 
But the highlights, cashews, pasta, ravioli, sunflower seeds, salami. Now, just kale, spinach, silver beet, and millet. I think you look amazing. I just want to prove it to myself. There's not much of a swelling there, but it is in his leg. Whereas before, it was a real separation where you it had was a, a big, yeah. thick bubble coming up. But it was, I mean, it was huge before. He looks healthier. You know, I would think that healthy living has its advantages. Eat your greens. <laughs> Even for someone like me who works with animals all the time, I find it amazing that you can actually shrink down a tumour just by using the right food but it's exactly what's happened with Pretty. It's great news for both Pretty and Maurizio. As hard as it has been to, to stick to this diet, and I'm very happy, obviously, that I've seen the tumour go down myself. Well, I'm happy because he's going to have a longer life yep. and hopefully a better quality of life. Chris, thank you. No I really appreciate it very much. Good luck. For Maurizio and Pretty, they've been together for 42 years, and thankfully, this simple change in his diet could give them 42 more years. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.